So hi everyone, welcome back to the Crash Course Lecture Series for the Autoimmune Disease Machine Learning Challenge. In this lecture, we're going to cover uh, the data that you'll be working with during the three crunches, uh, how the data is organized, uh, and then what are the actual crunches, what are the actual tasks that you're going to be working on with these data sets. So first, I'd like to give you uh, a really brief recap of the first two lectures before we go into the data. So in the first lecture, uh, you got an introduction to autoimmune disease and you learned about ulcerative colitis and how pathologists study uh, ulcerative colitis tissue by doing these H&E stains. And here again, we have this comparison between healthy colon where you have these nice ordered crypts and ulcerative colitis where you're seeing this inflammation and really massive changes in the tissue structure and organization. So, you know, this is really great. Pathologists can learn a lot from these images, but in the challenge or in these crunches, we really want to move beyond that. And then we also want to ask, can we use these images to inform uh, predictions about uh, the development of cancer in these patients? The second lecture, we cover the technologies that are used to measure gene expression programs. So you remember that gene expression programs are groups of genes that are turned on and regulated together during a biological process, and they dramatically change from health to disease. So from health to ulcerative colitis, or from healthy colon to colorectal cancer. And then we've also introduced three different technologies to profile these colon tissues. There are these H&E stains that pathologists use, and then there's the spatial transcriptomics measurements where we can profile hundreds of genes at a time while maintaining spatial information. And then there are these single cell RNA-seq or single cell transcriptomics measurements where we're measuring thousands of single cells and getting gene expression for all 20,000 genes, but we lose the spatial information. Okay, so that's a brief recap of what you've already seen, and now, Let's go into what data you're going to be working with. So we'll talk about the clinical samples that we're working with and the data that's derived from them. From them. And then finally, we'll go into the three different crunches. So first, the clinical samples. So the collection of the clinical samples uh, from ulcerative colitis patients was spearheaded by uh, Dr. Ron McXavier, who again is one of the organizers of this, of this challenge, and also uh, with help from Dr. Angela Shi, who is a pathologist at Harvard Medical School and Massachusetts General Hospital. And they collected eight tissue samples from patients with colon inflammation. So, here we're showing again non-inflamed colon and inflamed colon. This is the view from a colonoscopy. And most of the samples you're going to be working with are from ulcerative colitis. Uh, and we have pieces of the tissue that are both from inflamed and non-inflamed regions. We also have a few samples from a more mild form of inflammation called diverticulitis. Um, we provide these samples because there's less change to the colon spatial organization in diverticulitis. So this is a good thing to compare to when you want to think about what healthy colon looks like versus what inflamed or heavily inflamed colon looks like in ulcerative colitis. So this is a good point of reference when looking at the changes in spatial organization as inflammation increases. So each tissue sample was prepared by uh, a group of doctors and pathologists for uh, processing an H&E image and also collecting spatial transcriptomic data. And for each tissue, uh, our pathologist, Angela Shi, um, looked at uh, the tissue and the H&E stain and diagnosed the disease type and how severe it is, and also looked for evidence of dysplasia, which you'll remember is a sign of precancer. It's these early abnormal growths in the epithelial cells. So here is the tissue processing pipeline uh, that each of these samples went through. Uh, the, this is work that was done at the Broad Institute by Osa Segerstolpe and Crystal Lynn. And what they did was they take the colon tissue that's been taken out of the patient and they chop it up and they identify the different layers of the tissue. Then they embed the tissue in paraffin. Paraffin is a rigid substrate, it's like wax. And once the tissue is embedded in this wax, you can make very, very thin slices, five micron width, and that's ideal for microscopy and imaging. So you make these uh, paraffin blocks, you make these very thin sections as you see here, and then you can stain those very thin sections of the colon tissue with the H&E stain, and Angela, the pathologist, can look at it and start to annotate the image and tell us uh, what's happening from the histopathology perspective. 
So here are the first four of the eight samples you'll be working with. These are the H&E images of ulcerative colitis samples, an inflamed piece from patient one, and a non-inflamed piece from patient one. In addition to diverticulitis samples, which look a lot more normal in terms of the colon tissue organization. You see clearly all the layers and not really evidence of uh, bad inflammation. And then here's the next four tissue sections you'll work with. Um, these are all ulcerative colitis. Uh, patients, an inflamed and a non-inflamed piece, and then two other inflamed pieces. And then, uh, importantly, uh, when Dr. Angela Shi was looking at this sample, uh, she spotted that this patient has dysplasia, which again is a mark of precancer. So let's look at that H&E stain a little more closely. Um, so just to remind you, uh, there's a continuum of cancer where we go from normal colon mucosa to dysplasia, which is these abnormal growth of epithelial cells, all the way to carcinoma, which is the colorectal cancer. And so here's the H&E image of that patient, uh, uh, colon tissue that was taken out. And Angela noted that this region of the mucosa that's darker has dysplasia, and this region that's a little lighter and looks more a little more normal and ordered is non-cancerous. So, this was very interesting to us because we wanted to know, you know, what's different between these regions and can we learn more about the regions with dysplasia and better identify them from pathology images. And on the right here, we have some of the notes that Dr. Shi made about that image, but the most important thing is that was remarked was that there's this low-grade dysplasia in this region here. So that's an overview of the tissue, uh, the clinical tissue samples you'll be working with. And now we will discuss uh, the data that's derived from those samples.